Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today, it's my actually my most requested one yet. We're talking about Ableton templates. Chain, looking like Ice Age. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to explain what's in my Ableton template and how I go about approaching it and uh, why I included what I included. Also, if you want, I'm actually going to include a link to download my Ableton template for free in the description below. Uh, so uh, you can grab that there if you want to be lazy and not create your own. However, I do recommend you create your own because what's important is finding something that works for you and something that inspires you and gets your creative juices flowing. Uh, you know, this is what works for me. Probably isn't what's going to work for you and, and it shouldn't because everyone's different and everyone's their own person and everyone's going to you know, do their thing their own way. However, I'll explain to you why I created this one. But before we do, I'd love if you could slam the subscribe up there. I'm going to be uh, trying to drop new content every week and uh, just share what I know. Okay, before we dive into my template, let me just explain quickly how you save an, a template. So basically you go, you create a, a project with everything blank. Uh, you can create whatever channels you want, whatever effects you want, whatever settings you want. So say on you have a, a plugin that you have set up, you can set up all the settings on this. And then once you get it all totally perfect, you go up and if you're in Ableton 11, you hit file, save, live set as default set. And that will save it so that every time you open up Ableton, it will open up this blank canvas, this blank project. And even if you have it like closed like this versus open like this, like however you save it, that is how it's going to be. Uh, if you want on Ableton 11, you can also go save live as a template. And what that does is that then saves it into this templates category. And these are basically just little projects that you can quickly open. Uh, so, you know, there's one for podcasting. So maybe you're, you host a podcast and you can have one template that you can automatically open if that's what you want to work on. You can have another template if you want to work on a tech house track, and then you can have another te template if you want to work on recording a band. You can have all kinds of different ones that you can quickly access. But the default one is the one that opens every time you open up Ableton. That's it. Okay, so this template is quite simple. I don't have too, too much in it, and the reason why it's simple is because I used to have a very complicated template, and it had a ton of channels, and what I was doing every time I would open up Ableton as I would kind of work through everything that was in my template. So say I had a kick and then I had a clap and then I had a hi-hat and then I had an effects group and then I had a leads group and then I had all this stuff. And so every time I open Ableton, I kind of just go through the motions of like, okay, I'll do this and then I'll do this and then I'll do this. And what ended up happening is I ended up just kind of writing the same way each time and writing almost like a similar type vibe and style. And I found that my template was almost limiting me in like and funneling me into writing a certain type of track and a certain style of track. And so one day I was just like, no, fuck it. I'm going to delete all the shit. I'm going to have a really simple one. You know, like here, I have a kick channel. I have basses. And that's basically just two uh, instances here of this one's Serum. This one's Diva with a MIDI clip already there. And then I have a reference uh, channel and this reference channel is set to external out so quickly to explain this is down here on any channel you can go and select where it's routed to and by default it's always gonna be set to master so what's what that means is this kick channel is gonna be playing and it's going to run through here and out through this mixer channel and then to the master where it's gonna go out through all that stuff but what you can do is if you want you can route in this case, I have routed this basses group to sidechain bus, which is this channel up here. And that means it's going to go up to sidechain bus, and from the sidechain bus, it's going to go to the master. All right. But this reference one, I have it going to external out. And why that is, is because this reference track, what I'll do with it is I'll go and I'll put a song in. So maybe I'll, in this case, I'll have Miracle Maker, and I will A, B my song to their song. So I'll take a listen. I'll be like, oh, cool. All right. The kick drum is like pretty wide or pretty narrow or pretty tight or pretty long or the clap is really bright or the hi-hat is really dull or the bass is, you know, taking up sort of the 100, 200 range. And I'll just take a note and I'll listen to that song and then I'll, you know, solo it. Listen to my song. 
solo it, listen to that song, listen to my song, and just try to really compare the two and try to pick out, okay, what can I do? Maybe I need to shorten my clap drum. Maybe I need to add in more shakers. Maybe there's this sort of like high-end air stuff that I need to add. Um, it can help so much with mixing and mastering, um, but having it do external out, it then bypasses all of these effects that you have on your master chain. And so, you know, you can actually properly compare them without the master chain affecting it. Okay, moving through. Up here, this is sort of my side chain section. I talked about it earlier. So I have, I have my basses running to this side chain bus up here, right? And you can do this with any audio channel. You just add in a new audio channel and say I wanted this reference track. Instead of it going external out, I could just route it to this other audio channel here. You actually have to click this in button, which means it's going to accept inputs. And now it's routing from here into this other audio channel. So that's all, that's easy setup. Um, in this case, I have on my sidechain bus an LFO tool. And I like to use volume shaping for my sidechain. So LFO tool, kickstart. Uh, volume shaper, all of these, they kind of all work very, very similarly. Uh, the reason why I like to do this versus a compressor is I find I have a lot more control. I'm not just trying to fiddle in with a release knob. And I think if you're writing house or techno or anything for on the floor, you're going to really benefit from using volume shaping over compression uh, because it, uh, it, you just really do have a lot of control. And the difference between this and this is actually quite a bit, and, and it really can affect the groove and the danceability of a track and sort of the energy. So if you don't have any of those plugins, you could even use a utility and just add volume automation. So say the, the kick drum was, uh, say it was this Dom Dalla kick. Let's move it over for a second. And I can take a look and say, okay, look, the kick is about half a beat long. So I can draw, and if I hold down Option, it'll curve. I can draw a side chain, basically a volume automation, and just duplicate it across, and uh, that can be my side chain. However, I like to use LFO tool, and what I do is I have it set up to a MIDI trigger, and that's what this is here. Um, how this works, I'll, I'll delete it and set it up for you so you, I can explain, is you, you set up a MIDI note on here, it can be any note actually, and what I want to do is I want to say, okay, LFO tool, duck, you know, apply, apply this, this automation here every time this MIDI note happens. And what it, this means is like, you know, I have this kick drum here. And so then as I'm building the song, I'm going to duplicate ev this MIDI note everywhere that there's a kick drum. And then on LFO tool, what I need to do is I need to have it set up in MIDI note retrig mode and have it set up to envelope mode. And what envelope mode means is it's going to play this curve, and if it stops up here, it's just going to stay up here. It's not going to duck back down. It's just going to play once every time a MIDI note happens. Now on this trigger channel, we need to actually send the MIDI information from this trigger channel to LFO tool. And so any time you want to send MIDI information from one channel to another, you can sometimes you can set it up here so that I can go sidechain bus, and then you can see here it's actually routing to LFO tool, which is kind of what we wanted. But I, I actually like to use an external instrument. And the reason I like to do that is I'll show you why. So I'll go load up an external instrument. And in this case, I can route the MIDI to sidechain bus. And it's automatically detecting LFO tool because it's the only plugin that's on there. But sometimes if you do that and you have a bunch of different plugins, this menu will drop down as well. So then what I can do is I can group this and I can duplicate the group. So now I have two of these and I can route this to this light. And so now I have one, the MIDI is going to sidechain bus and two, the MIDI is going to light. And maybe I had another instance of LFO tool somewhere, you know, maybe I add a vocal and I want to do another one. I can just duplicate this and route this to the vocal too, if I wanted. Um, versus each time you'd have to duplicate the trigger and it would kind of get messy. This is just a little neater. This light channel is just another LFO tool with a lighter sidechain. That's all that is. Same settings, just a, just a little bit lighter. And the reason why I do these buses at the top 
is 100% just for workflow because I want to be able to get my ideas on the page as quickly as possible. And so now anytime I add a new channel and I want to add sidechain, I'll go add a new ch channel and then I'll just route it to either sidechain bus or light. And then it's just done. I don't need to do anything else. It's super quick. Uh, and then on my sidechain bus, say I want to adjust the sidechain, say I change the, the kick drum, you know, midway through my song, and I'm going to need to adjust the sidechain. I can do that and it'll apply to everything that I've routed to that channel. I won't need to go in and adjust my sidechains on a bunch of different channels. You know, it'll, it'll kind of go everything that's there. So I have that all set up in my template because it's a little bit tedious to do each time. And so every time I open up Ableton, it's already done. It's already set up. I can get to work right away and I don't need to be setting up my sidechain each time. It's just done. Uh, that, I love doing it that way. It's just a lot quicker for me. Okay, moving on. Down here, I have a Valhalla Room reverb, um, just for you know sending whatever little vocals and whatnot. I have a hybrid reverb uh, with a really short decay time, and basically this is my room tone. This is what I send some of my drums to. I like using a hybrid reverb because it is uh, it's a real recording that is meant to sound sort of like a real place. It works great for when you try to to put things in in a, a space. Um, versus kind of creating a long tail of sorts. Hybrid Reverb puts things in, in a real space of sorts. Uh, that is that. I got a delay. And then on my master channel, I have an EQ that's in mid-side mode. So here you can either select stereo or mid-side. Mid-side means that you're EQing what's on the sides differently than you're EQing what's in the middle on mono. And you can adjust it here. And so... I've basically rolled off the sub on the sides. I have an Ozone Imager. I love this plugin so much. Uh, basically a multi-band imager. So here is the lows, and I have those, you know, everything below 136, pretty mono. And then here I've actually widened all of these a little bit, so everything that's sort of above the lows gets widened a little bit. I'll always go in and adjust this per taste per song, and I think it's always better to try to get your stereo image like widened in the mix before you get to the master, but sometimes it does uh, add a little bit of juice just to widen the whole thing up a little bit. Uh, then I have a Pro L2. Uh, I like to produce into a limiter just because I, I, I like to hear how it, my track is going to sound sort of at the final stages. I want to like ha hear it loud and uh, so I'll, I'll usually, and usually at my first export, I'm, I'm going to add a limiter just to uh, get it up to sort of a, a volume that I know I can compare it to other tracks to. Um, so yeah, I just have it set to an EDM punchy preset. And uh, as, I, as I produce, you know, I may go in and tweak some of this and may drive it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll produce right into a limiter. So that way I know, okay, this is what it's going to sound at the final stage. And then if I'm, you know, in, if at the end I, I have someone else master my track or, or, or the label's paying for it, uh, which for the most part doesn't happen too often. I'm, uh, you know, pretty much do most of my own masters. Uh, but if I did need to do that, I can just like go and delete all that stuff uh, and they can then reapply it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I like to produce into a limiter, see how it's going to sound big and loud see if I'm going to get distortions in the limiter uh, and, and maybe I am. And so maybe I'm going to, you know, adjust some of my mixing so that I know it's going to like hit the limiter nice. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Ableton templates, like don't overthink it. Try to find something that is going to inspire you, inspire creativity, not limit you. Uh, things that are going to enhance your workflow, make you work faster, make you, make you work smarter. Uh, that is about it. As I said, you can download my template in the description below as well. If you're interested in learning from me, I offer one-on-one -on -one Ableton lessons also in the description below. Uh, yeah, also the high octane drum kit available. You can use the code demo buddy to save five bucks available at vibrancylabel.com. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Subscribe up here. More videos here. Music down there. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Love you guys. Hope you guys learned a lot. Make sure to let me know also in the description what you want to learn next. Okay. Bye.